How's it going everybody? Stellar here today, and I just wanted to show you guys uh, the power of this new cloth modifier and everything as far as, uh, you know, the tool goes with hard ops. So, uh, I was messing around with this earlier and I came out with some pretty neat results, so I'm going to go ahead and try to replicate that today. Um, so what I'm doing here is I just took an Ico Spear and just cut it, and so that's what we're gonna start with I wanna kinda do like a like a spaceship like you're looking out of a portal almost so we can definitely do that uh, today so this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go into control tilde make sure my uh, sharp options are apply crease and seam just make a life a little bit easier as far as uh, unwrapping this goes like if I want to texture paint it or whatnot um, but before we get any further any too much crazy here. I'm going to turn on my screencast keys. I always forget to do that before I start the recording one day. I promise I'll get it right. So moving along, I'm going to go ahead and delete just only the face here. And then I'll select everything. And we'll just mark it uh, to where it gives us nice sharp seams and everything here. Next up, I'm going to go in and add a cylinder. We're just going to scale it down a bit. And rotate it on the Y here. And then we're just going to do a difference modifier, but because I'm doing this kind of backwards, it is going to poke it out on the front, but that's not a, a huge worry at all. So I'm going to go ahead and just scale this in to where I get something that I kind of like. So we're going to go with this here. Go ahead and hide that. And then I'm going to hold control when I press sharpen. That way it just C sharps it and applies the bool. So I'm going to click that, control plus, just to kind of grow the selection, and then we're just going to do only, er, we're just going to do faces, not only faces. So we're left with this kind of shape here. Uh, now there's not much we can do with this shape because the geometry is a bit wild. We could subdivide it, but well, let's use hard ops. So we'll just go into our mesh tools here and go to dice. And I'll actually scroll out so I can kind of see what I'm doing here. So dice. And I'll just press X, Y, and Z, and then we'll just kind of roll this up to where it's nice and dense here. So if you look at our geometry now, it's kind of oddly triangulated, so you could do it this way, or we can go ahead and see what it looks like if I were to subdivide this. But as you would see, as you would expect, areas where we have this circle cut out in it looks a bit funky, so we're just going to go ahead and do the dice option that we were just going to go with there because that it works out best. It's kind of weird doing it on surfaces like this, um, but it works. So now I'm going to select everything, press F3 to pull up my search, and we're just going to flip the normals here by typing in flip just to make sure my normals are facing the way I want it to face as we're going to be looking out kind of from this position here, uh, looking through a porthole and like a like a uh, the ISS pod or something like that. Uh, but for, before we get too crazy, we do need to do a little bit of mesh cleanup here. Nothing too crazy. We just don't want all this uh, geometry floating so close to uh, what we got going on here. So it's just in this one area, and we're going to have to figure out kind of what's going on here as far as that goes um, and it looks like it's just gonna be kind of weird so easiest way to fix that is just to kind of play with it and you know hope for the best kind of just merge geometry together until you get rid of the the horrible issues that we were just given and I'm just gonna add a support there to that and then we'll just merge that one Maybe not even merge. We'll just go ahead and move these two up since it's in our way here. And we're left with a decent mesh. Now keep in mind, this isn't going to be perfect as far as like, you know, game, game worthy goes. I'm just doing this for the renders as I do most of my artwork. Uh, so now we're going to go into add modifier and cloth. And we'll go ahead and press the play button going to be real laggy and kind of crap here because I got a lot going on plus I'm recording and computer's not the most powerful computer it's not you know it doesn't have the 
3090 or anything like that. So we'll just go ahead and regrow that there. Kind of let it grow for a minute, you know, increase the increase the pressure. I'm just hovering over the pressure and scroll wheeling. And uh, we're just kind of letting, letting it go to see what happens here. So I'm kind of happy with how that looks. We'll just go ahead and apply it and then press the check mark. So now we're kind of left with this weirdly inverted garbage looking mesh. But we got our seams in a really nice spot. So I'm going to go ahead and slap it with a subdivision here. So I did that uh, just by pressing control plus one. Uh, a lot of people don't know that if you do control plus one, two, three, and so on and so forth, it gives you, you know, your different levels of subdivision. You can go all the way up. So just so people are aware. So this is kind of the mesh that we're left with here. It's pretty decent. I might go ahead and bump up the levels viewport to probably two just to kind of make things a lot more smooth and nicer to look at. Uh, I don't have to uh, smooth it or anything because it's already been smoothed by uh, C sharping it and cutting it and everything. So moving along we'll go ahead and add in another little cylinder here. And I am aware, I've had a couple of uh, comments on some of my videos, people have said that I move a little bit too fast and everything like that. Well, it's just, it's just the way I work. Um, I'm definitely not a beginner uh, when it comes to Blender, but I'm not a pro either. I don't like to call myself a pro. Um, so I like to move fast and I like to do things fast. Um, I don't like to say that I am beginner friendly because you know a lot of beginners can't follow along uh, fastly so I'm just gonna right click and do uh, I mean to do poke faces I meant to do bridge faces so it kinda gives us this little cylinder here and what we can do now is we can go ahead and get a camera in here just kinda place it where we want it to where it looks like we're gonna be looking out of a portal here so I kinda like the way that looks there but we'll go ahead and hide the camera for now so I'm going to sharpen this as well as give it a decent bevel. Probably do something like that. Next up, I'm just going to take this and just do a little bit of detailing. You know, can't can't really go too crazy when it comes to detailing. Um, I'm just going to bevel that in. Take this and we're just going to kind of do something like that, give us an area for the window and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this and just make it its own selection. And then I will take this edge loop, fill it, that edge loop, fill it. So now we have a window here. Go up to mesh tools and then we can go to our add blank material but if we hover over it it'll give us the different options so I'm gonna hold shift and just give it a glass so we can still see through it it's uh, one of the features that I really like is that you can see glass in the viewport without it even being in textured view here so that's pretty neat I've always enjoyed uh, that feature there so always very nice to have see-through glass in the viewport because uh, it kind of gives you a little bit of idea of you know what you got going on here so moving along um, in my previous attempts at doing this which has just been one I really like the idea so instead of going through and just selecting all of these uh, edges here I'm just gonna work smarter and not harder so what we'll do is we'll go to mesh we will do icosphere very cool now that that's there we can go ahead and add in a cube we'll do pretty much the same thing we did last time and that's just give it a good old difference right there and we'll move it over to where it's just a little bit past what we already got here and I'll go ahead and sharpen that now that we've got it here Go ahead and select everything. We'll just do mark just so I can kind of see what's going on better and it kind of gives us that shape. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Either way, we're moving swiftly along. We'll go ahead and 
get rid of this. We'll go ahead and just get rid of faces. Select everything. We'll just do curve extract here. And that didn't do exactly what I was wanting at all, so we'll try that one more time. Go ahead and just delete uh, only the edges here. We'll just take every face, go ahead and delete it, faces, and to say only faces here. Select everything, we'll just do a curve extract on it. We'll just shade smooth that, and then we will push that over onto our existing geometry here. We'll go ahead and hide what it left us, and I see that this is going to be a little bit on the big side, so what we can do is we'll just go ahead and adjust the curve, kind of make it a bit smaller, and then we'll pull it back just a little bit. So we kind of got that going there, and that looks pretty decent to me. What we can do now is um, I can select this, we'll just go ahead and right click convert to mesh, so now it's mesh. I'll add in another cylinder here, rotate it on the Y by 90. And then we will just difference that off so we don't see any of those crosses going in front of the window because that's not what we want. We want a decent result here. So that's what we're going for is a decent result. So now that we've kind of got our little bases here and we got our camera view set up, uh, there's always multiple different things you can do as far as, uh, you know, just making something neat looking. So we'll go ahead and send it like that. Now I can go into, go into uh, look dev plus here. You can just cycle through. I think I like the nighttime lights the best, so we'll go with that one. Go ahead and give this a new material here. Probably do like a black or let's even go with like a dark red. I, I like the look of that better. Now we'll just go give this a new material as well. You can do any color of the rainbow, so I'm just going to keep it back to uh, white, so we'll just keep it a nice white color here. And if you want to, you can also use, you know, like the, the Chip Walters materials and stuff like that. I um, just want to do like a, like a basic overview here of the kind of stuff you can do with these tools. It's always nice. We'll just go ahead and give this a nice metallic color here, probably a little bit darker. Nothing too crazy going on. All right, so now that we've got the uh, basic colors we want on this, what we can do now is I'll go back into Look Dev Plus and just be sure to press R to make that my render. So if we go here to the Render tab, that's what the render is going to be. So not too bad there. Next up, you want to make sure you have enabled in your preferences um, images as planes. So make sure that's in, uh, enabled and then I'm just going to import a image of earth from the ISS and we'll go from there. All right, so now that I've imported the ISS image here, I'm just going to go ahead and push this outside my window so that way we can kind of see what's going on, if you know what I mean. You know, you want to be able to see out, so we'll just kind of position this somewhere that looks, at, looks about right, looks decent. So next up, what I can do is I'm going to kind of just play with the glass a little bit, um, play with the color. It's not as as clear as I wanted it to be, so that'll work there. We'll go ahead and make it just a little bit darker. Um, we'll go back to this plane here and go to the shading tab.
and I'll just plug the color into the emission. So now we have a good little image to work with here. So we'll go back over to modeling and we're looking pretty good so far. Nothing too terribly crazy. We'll go ahead and pop it into cycles and see what we're looking like here. I much prefer cycles as of late. It's been so much nicer of a rendering image uh, for me at least. I, I do love me some Eevee but I will always enjoy and love cycles. All right, I had a little bit of an issue, but that's no big deal. Managed to get right back to where we were. After messing with this, I realized I'm not really a huge fan of this HDRI, so we're just gonna go ahead and scroll through until we find something a little bit better, a little bit more suiting. So I like interior, but it's not always the best looking one. Um, so we'll go ahead and We'll go with interior. I'll go back and press R to make sure that's the one that shows up in the render here. And that is the one that shows up in the render. Go to the world and we'll just go ahead and turn it down just a little bit. Just kind of like a, a base lighting. So we'll do something about like that. I'll add in a point light and just kind of put it over here. Give it a little bit of a blue tinge and that looks pretty good to me. So I'll put up on screen right now the final render. I ended up doing it with Cycles. Um, Cycles doesn't like me whenever I'm recording so I had to do this off camera but I'll put it up make sure it's up right now so you guys can see the finished results and other than that I hope you guys uh, found this useful I'm very eager to see what you guys will come up with with these new features as far as hard ups comes um, so yeah definitely you know post it in the box cutter hard ops discord on the Facebook pages post it everywhere you know, this is the new age of cloth, and I'm really enjoying it. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, or emotional outbursts, definitely put that in the comments. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.